Gentlemen, on your anvils is a cloth. Go ahead and lift that cloth up. What you have there is a two inch diameter round stock of W1 high carbon steel. Now, today we're measuring how well you guys move metal, how well you put it exactly where it needs to be. So there will be no signature blades in your signature style today, no, no. Instead, you'll be forging the last piece to a puzzle. This puzzle. Now, you have just enough steel to make that full tang design happen. So make sure you plan accordingly. One wrong hammer blow, and you're gonna be in trouble. Good luck, Bladesmiths. Your three hours starts now. Dale and Keaton already have work sticks welded onto their rounds, and they've got them in the forge. I look over, and I see Keaton and Dale over there welding already. I grab some paper and I trace out my shape so that way I can measure and take dimensions on different aspects of the blade. Logan immediately comes over with a piece of paper and he's there gonna trace go. out his design. My plan is to take it over to the press, draw it out to about three inches shy of the length, and then widen it to about two inches of the blade. The first step to me is to pull that metal out. That's smart work. Overall, this is a wicked challenge. It's hard. I did not think that taking a round piece of steel and making a puzzle piece was going to be this difficult. Dale rotating in. I'm reheating and pressing. I'm getting to the point where I notice that I don't have enough metal in the right areas, and I have it thinned out too much. Mm. There's no way that I can recover to meet the parameters of the knife. If I went and tried to chase it, it will waste a lot of valuable time. I could be going home. Dale has ditched his original piece of steel, and he's starting over. I already know that I'm behind. I have to use my time very wisely to play catch up. Blade Smiths, one hour has elapsed. You have two hours remaining to finish your work. Two hours. But I keep going back to the puzzle because I don't want to take off too much material. Keaton is our only smith who continues to walk up here and trace the outline of this blade onto his billet. Keaton's really got the right idea here. I'm hitting this knife over the horn of the anvil, and the curve is coming in just like I want it to. Looks like Logan is just adding a little bit more curve. I stretch the handle out. I take it over, and I look at the steel compared with the puzzle piece. Oh, crap, it's too long. Logan's somehow finding steel oh, he's to cut, cut off of this blade. Logan's cutting off at least four inches. We gave these guys enough steel to make that pattern. They really should not be removing any material. I don't need unnecessary amounts of metal on the back end of this. Logan might be able to forge that shape, but it's going to be a mini version. My steel's thin, but I think I'm going to get pretty close if everything ends up going well. Right now, not real confident. This is definitely not a blade-shaped object at all. It looks more like a bow door. I mean, if I was going to go down the Hudson, I guess I'd be OK. Now you can see Nick's paddle. Doug, what do you think of that shape? It's a spatula. <laughs> it's a spatula. <laughs> I'm struggling a little bit. It's a little hot in here. I'm trying to catch up. Not an excuse. You just got to adapt and overcome. Nick is struggling with this a little bit more than I thought. You know, once I get this rough, rough profiling done, I'm going to head over to the grinder. I feel like that's my strongest suit in this whole competition. 20 minutes! 20 minutes, Blade Smith! I feel my blade is looking really good. I'm liking my profile. It's fitting in the puzzle. Now I need to go quench my blade. Dale is really the come from behind kid here. Everything looks good, looks straight. Oh! oh. <laughs> Drop that anywhere. Time to French fry your arm. Oh, boy. Oh, all right, he's got all right. oil all over his sleeve. Yeah, now he's going to catch on fire, this guy. And basically, he just turned his arm into a wick. I decided to sacrifice my shirt for the blade. I felt that the blade was more important. And luckily, I brought a second shirt with me. I go directly back over to the grinders, and I'm going to just do as much material removal as I possibly can. 15 minutes! I got this profile down the way that I want it. Might not be the exact shape that's up there, but I'm going to have to move forward. I really, really need this quench to go right. It's now or never. Nick quenched. I got my little jig set up to make sure it's straight. Oh, that 
That's where that goes. Baby hard, but it's still brittle. There's just this big, huge crack at the tip of my knife. I don't want to give up, but at this point, I don't know that I can do anything. Five, four, three, two, one. Blaze fish, shut down your machines, drop your tools. This first round of competition is over. All right, Bladesmiths, in this first round of competition, we asked you guys to forge the missing piece to our Forged and Fire custom puzzle over here. Now, we found our piece, and it's time to check how yours fit up. Dale, you're up first. Please present your blade to the judges. Very close. All right, Dale, first off, really good job on knowing when to start over. Smartest thing you did out there. These cracks you've got, these multiple cracks along here, you're gonna have to really deal with these carefully because this crack right here in the middle is halfway through this blade. So there's no just grinding it to shape and hoping they go away, they're not gonna go away. But again, I commend you on knowing when to, to change your direction. I think that was a really smart move. Keaton, you're up. Please present your blade to the judges. That's pretty good. It's the closest. I got a tip for you. Before you run a file across, take some of the scale off and then hit it with a file. Because I think what you were doing is you were just blowing through scale. Forged scale was on there, not the hard steel underneath. But this right here is this deep forge mark. That's going to be tough to get out. But uh, I think you're set up good. I think you did a good job. All right, Logan, let's see how your blade matches up. Please present your weapon to the judges. Definitely a lot of gaps there. All right, Logan, as you were trying to draw it out, you cut out some steel, so obviously there's not enough steel to fill the gaps in there. Your grinds are uneven. If you move forward, I'd really like to see you clean that up. All right, Nick, you're up. Please present your blade to the judges. Doesn't match at all. I kind of like the shape of this. It's just, it's not the same shape. You have this really pronounced ridge and then a break, as opposed to this almost flat line on the back of this. The 800 pound gorilla in the room, other than me, is that crack. I've seen W1 pop like this. It's definitely a big issue. All right, bladesmiths, the judges have made their final decision. The bladesmith leaving the forge is. Nick, unfortunately, your blade doesn't make the cut. Please surrender your blade. They uh, made the right decision. I'm a little disappointed. I didn't really want to go home first, but it was the wrong shape. Didn't quite make it out to the size that it needed to be. Getting to have this experience was definitely once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, and I wouldn't change anything. 